Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create an embossed metal effect in Photoshop. Before we get started with this video tutorial, I want to show you what it is that we're going to do. Now, I downloaded this image from the Morg file. I'm going to show you where you can get that. And I'm going to show you a couple of embossing effects. One of them is this one here, which is a sort of raised emboss effect on this jug. And the other one is this, it's a deboss effect where it's pressed into the jug. I'm also going to show you how you could warp these around a shape like this because this one has not been shot face on. So that's what we're setting out to do, so let's get started. The image that I'm using is from a site called Morg File, and these images are free for commercial and personal use. The deal with them is that you must alter them, and since I plan to alter this image, I can use a Morg File image. So I'm just coming here and I'm going to type stainless steel. Because this was what I was asked by a viewer to do. They wanted to know how to make things look as if they were embossed on stainless steel. So this is the image that I chose to use. Click on the image and you can then read the licensing details and download the image from here. Now I already have it downloaded and opened inside Photoshop. Now I have a couple of layers here that were the illustrative layers. So I'm just going to get rid of those, just put them on the trash can. So we're starting out afresh in Photoshop. Now the reader asked me if I could apply a vector shape to this image. So I'm going to do just that, but I'm going to use a custom shape that is a vector shape. I've got the shape feature up here selected. You can use shape, path or pixels and I want to use shape. Now in earlier versions of Photoshop, you could do this by just clicking on an icon. But this technique can be used in practically any version of Photoshop, any sort of recent version. It's not specific to say CC or anything like that. Now I selected this little sort of fleur-de-lis shape because I kind of like that. So I'm just going to come down here and I'm just going to hold the shift key as I drag out the shape in position. Now if it doesn't go exactly where I want it to, I'm just going to hold the space bar as I move it into position because if I haven't let go of the left mouse button, I can move and resize it until I do. So I'm just going to let go. So you can see here that I have a fill and no stroke. So this is going to be the debossed version. Now to create the deboss, we're going to actually use a layer style, but right now we've got this black fill color and we're going to get that black fill color unless we get rid of it. And the way we get rid of it is to adjust the fill here on this layer. So I'm just going to drag the fill to zero. So effectively I've got what looks like a path, but it is actually a shape and it's filled. And so now when we create our effect, we're going to actually punch out this shape or punch it into the jug. So I'm just going to click here on the FX icon to add a layer style and I want bevel and emboss. And this is pretty much the default settings that we have for bevel and emboss. And you can see that it looks right now as if this shape is actually lifted out of the jug when in actual fact we want to press it in. Well, that has a lot to do with the direction of the light. If we see light coming in from this direction, we assume that this is a raised surface. But if we turn the light around and light it from underneath, then we're going to get a very different result. You can see that it starts to look beveled. I'm just going to move the light in and by adjusting the altitude, then I'm going to get a more or less raised effect. So I just need to find the perfect spot for this. Now, since this is an older sort of jug, I'm thinking that the embossing wouldn't be particularly heavy. So I'm really quite happy with that. But I could also adjust the depth here and just reduce it a little bit if I wanted to. So there's one of these effects and it's just done using an inner bevel, but in this case we're changing the angle of the light. So I'll click OK. Let's turn that off and let's go and create a new layer and let's go and do the same thing with our shape. So I've got my shape selected. This time let's put it on this pot over here. So again, I'm going to hold the Shift key as I drag it out. 
I'm just going to position it here. We're going to move it after we've actually created the effect. I'm just going to click away from it. Now in this case, I want no stroke at all, but I do want an outline. So I think about a three-point outline will be pretty good. So that's creating a line around this shape. So again, I'm going to reduce the fill to zero. And now we're going to apply our effect. So let's go again and get bevel and emboss. And again, with that light effect, we're pretty much getting what we want just straight out with this inner bevel. But you can always try some of these other bevels to see if it's giving you a better effect. With the outer bevel, what's happening is that the bevel's going outside the line that we created. With inner bevel, it's going inside the line. So we're just getting a finer result here. And you also have emboss, pillow emboss, and stroke emboss, which is obviously doing nothing here at all, but might in other circumstances do something for you. I'm actually just looking at this emboss effect and thinking, I actually quite like that. So why don't we choose that? But again, because the light is coming from the correct direction, it does look as if it's embossed on this shape. So if we're happy with that, we can just click OK. Now, as promised, I wanted to show you how it would look if we were to actually move this. So let's go ahead and warp it. Now, the first thing I need to do is to rasterize this layer. So I'm just going to click Rasterize Layer. And that's fixed that shape so that it's something now that I can select and that I can warp. So I'm just going to Control or Command click on the layer here. I'm going to choose Edit, Transform, Warp. And that creates this sort of warp grid over the shape, which means that I can now do things like moving it around. So I can bend it so it looks a bit more like it's actually on the outside of this jug, which has not been shot face on. So for a start, I'm moving it. And I'm also going to make sure that this side of the shape these handles here are much closer together because it's going to sort of get smaller or more shrunk together, more joined up the closer it is to the bend in the jug. And it's going to be longer over on this side. So I just want to create that sort of warp effect here. I'm just grabbing hold of the intersection of these lines to just make sure it's bending appropriately. And then if I'm happy with the result, I'm just going to click the check mark here. And here it is now on that shape. I'm just going to press Control or Command D to deselect the selection. Now, I haven't made the world's best job of warping that, but you can see how it is that you could create this shape as an embossed or debossed shape and then move and position it and warp it so that it looks as if it really were imprinted on the side of this container. So there's a way of creating pressed metal effects very, very simply in Photoshop. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications, including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.